Okay, okay guys, guys. Um, I'm going to start off. We've lost a few people, but I figure that the people who are here probably actually want to know a little bit more about um, trying to make your uh, scrolling in your application smooth. And by um, silky smooth, I, scrolling, I actually mean uh, particularly table view um, scrolling. There's a lot of other kinds of scrolling in iOS, obviously. Um, so as I started getting into the topic, <laughs> it's actually a very, very big topic. It covers things like how does, um, how does the drawing pipeline work in iOS, um, what things should you look for in your application when you find that things are slow, um, and what can you do to mitigate those problems as well. So there's a whole lot of stuff involved here. <clears throat> when I first thought about doing the talk, I thought, well, I'll just get up and do a, a quick um, presentation of some, some tricks that I use um, to help uh, measure and analyse scroll performance. Um, and as I got into it, there was obviously a whole lot more to it. So what I'd actually like to do is in this presentation talk to you about sort of doing the measurement and analysis part of uh, the scroll performance analysis. And maybe in a subsequent talk, maybe next month, go into some more detail about particular problems that you might be having and things that you can do to, to fix those problems. But generally when we talk about um, uh, you know, bad scrolling, we talk about two common symptoms. And the first one is um, typically low but consistent frame rates. So as you're scrolling, it's just consistently choppy or it's just slow. Um, and that can be caused by a number of things, but um, some of those might be excessive compositing. So you might have a lot of views in your table view cells that the GPU has to um, uh, composite onto the, um, the, uh, you know, the, the viewing frame buffer. There you go, Chris. <laughs> I'll just... I'll just Give me the, the, just give me the nod every now and then. I will delegate to Chris when I get stuck. Um, so it's excessive com compositing. Layer blending where you've got things um, that might be semi-opaque or have round corners where the GPU actually needs to render those things uh, off screen before it composites them into the uh, frame buffer. And pixel misalignment. So where you've got views that are um, maybe on a half pixel boundary and you can typically tell that with text in particular when the text is a little bit fuzzy. So um, when that does happen, the, the GPU needs to do anti-aliasing, and that's actually computationally expensive as well. So we typically use a couple of different tools to figure out um, whether you've got problems in your application. Aside from the fact that you sort of you know, scroll up and down and, and you go, gee, that scrolls like shit, um, you can actually get in with the tools that Apple give us and have a look at what's happening under the covers. So one of the typical ones we, we use is blended layers. And that's just showing us um, green areas where there hasn't been any um, sort of uh, uh, blending of layers, <laughs> as, as you'd expect. Um, but really what that means is there's no uh, transparency um, in the views that you're looking at or there's no round corners or things that would require the GPU to do off-screen um, rendering of those, um, those views. So the red is the stuff that's going to cause you trouble um, and the more red you have in your application uh, or in your scroll view, typically the worse your scrolling will be. The other one is misaligned images. So this can be because of the half pixel boundary problem that I told you about before, but also where you have images that are stretched. So you might have that, for, for example, here where um, the, uh, the user's uh, uh, avatar uh, image has been maybe um, centered on a, on a half pixel boundary, or uh, maybe it's been stretched or you know, either bigger or small than what it was originally. And the other one is off-screen rendering. And this is where, again, the GPU needs to do a uh, render into an off-screen buffer before it puts it into the frame buffer. And in this particular example, which I have to thank um, Sam for putting together for me this morning when I was coming into work, I said, I'm not going to have enough time to do my presentation slides and have a demo. Um, so Sam and I had a quick chat about what we thought might be a good representation of um, an application that you might um, have bad scrolling in, so we came up with, I think it's an app.net feed that shows you the person's um, avatar and some comments that they've made. With this particular example, there's actually a, a drop shadow around the photo, which is a little bit hard to see there, but that's, that's, um, that's showing up there in the, the yellow. So actually what I might do, this is going to have some live demos as well. So let's see. Now this 
we, we may not get the photos because my laptop doesn't have an internet connection. Um, if I tether to my phone, we might get that. Oop. Let's see. Yeah. Anyway. So they may not come up now. Um, but this is basically the application. And you can see those, um, those tools that I showed you before used to be that you could only use them in instruments. Now they've got the, um, the menu items here in the simulator so you can see firsthand um, what's going on. And it's a lot easier to turn them on and off in the debugger, obviously, uh, sorry, in the simulator, obviously, than uh, in instruments. So you can actually add them together. You can show color blended layers and misaligned images and off-screen rendering. But I find uh, often it's easier just to show one at a time. And the last one there. Copied images, which is the other one there. I, I haven't really used that, to be honest, so I'm not entirely sure when you'd find that useful. Now, of course, running this in the simulator, it scrolls really nicely. But obviously, when you get it on the device, that's when you find out that it might scroll like um, you don't want it to scroll. Um, so this little example here, obviously, when I show you the color blended layers, um, We've got a lot of blending going on there in each cell. And we've got, um, we've got a few views there. We've got the, the photo. We've got um, the person's um, handle and their comment. And we've also done some other stuff, like putting a date in there and all that kind of stuff. So that's, that's how we use those tools to sort of see what's going on. Um, in the subsequent talk that I do, I'll talk a little bit more about those pipelines and how and when they're invoked and, and why you might want to change the way you do things. The second um, symptom that you might see is a stuttering frame rate, but where it happens when the new cell comes onto the screen. And sometimes that's a little bit hard to tell. Sometimes when the cells are small, you might sort of see a bit of stuttering, but it's, it's kind of hard to tell whether it's actually because of the new cell or something else. So actually, we were talking before about um, ways to sort of an analyze that. It might be to actually make the cell height really big and then sort of see whether it happens every time a big cell comes on. It might be a little bit more obvious that that's actually uh, the cause of your problem. But typically, this, is, this, um, this kind of symptom happens because of expensive cell creation or the views within the, the cell. And that might be because you've got a really complex layer in the cell, um, particularly with things where you've got um, variable height text. And so you've got to you know, account for that and then put the, you know, something below that or an image or something below the text and something to the right of that, but not too far. I mean, auto layout um, may help with that in the future, but even that um, we've been using in the office on Mac OS X. And, seems to chew up all my CPU on my, on my desktop or my laptop computer, so I'm not quite sure how that's going to work um, on iOS. But uh, regardless of that, if you're doing a lot of uh, complex layout, that can, um, that can cause the, the cells to stutter when they come on, on screen. The other thing that I've typically seen quite a lot of is where you're loading or scaling big images. So at real estate, um, obviously, we're showing pictures of properties in the cells, and we download those, and we need to load them from the disk into the memory, and they need to be rendered on screen. Sometimes they're scaled dynamically, um, and that can be expensive as well. But when you try and fix these things, often it's, you know, you kind of go in there and go, oh, what's wrong? Oh, yeah, we'll try all these things. All I suggest is change one thing at a time, and then you'll be able to compare apples with apples. So it's like with any experiment, really. Just change one variable, come back, run your test again, see whether it's improved or not, and maybe how much by. The funny thing is that typically it won't ever just be one thing that you're doing wrong. It'll be multiple things. And you'll scale things back, and you go, wow, scrolling really good now. I've got no nothing in my cell, but it scrolls really good. And then you start adding things. It's like, yeah, still scrolling pretty good. And you add a few more, and it's like, yeah, it's getting a little bit worse. And then you add it all back in. It's like, oh, now it's crap again. And yeah, well, what can we kind of pull out, or what don't we need um, in these cells? And you know, designers will come to you with fancy gradients and corner radiuses and drop shadows and all that kind of stuff. But really, you know, um, a part of our challenge is to figure out how to present that without making the user interaction terrible. And so, part of my little secret here, which isn't a great secret, but um, it's, a, it's not a, a mind-shattering idea, but um, basically. UI automation isn't just for testing. UI automation lets you repeat something multiple times. And this is how, like, when I do a, a change in my code, I can actually rerun that test and see whether 
or what, what the effect has been? Because quite often you'll be at work and you'll, you'll tweak something and you'll go to somebody else, is that faster? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's faster. Let's videotape it. Let's see, you know, whether it's quicker than last time or, you know, let's change these other three things. Then we'll come back and, yeah, it really is faster, but how much by? And UI automation and instruments gives you some of the tools to do that, but it's not always um, the easiest thing to use. So what I'm going to show you here is um, how to use UI automation to do a very quick scroll test. And what you can see in the screenshot there is actually two different runs, whoop, pointing, two different runs, um, one where you can see that the CPU is quite big on the bottom, on the time profiler, it's, you know, the, the peaks are quite high, and the one on top of it, they're actually quite a lot lower, so we're using less CPU. The top one is the core animation one, which is telling us frames per second. Um, you can see it's, yeah, it's not, not too bad on the bottom one, but obviously a lot higher, which is good, on the top one there. So I'm actually going to show you how I do that. Um, actually, what I'll do, I'll show you a few more slides first. So we use a UI automation um, instrument and add a script. So close your eyes, because this is my awesome JavaScript. <laughs> um, I, I want to keep it simple for, for demonstration purposes, but obviously you might want to refactor this code. Um, <laughs> it is, because it's the simplest thing I could do. Um, uh, it used to be that in, um, in uh, the UI automation thing, you can actually record your um, actions on the screen, and it will actually start writing the script for you. Um, and I always f used to forget how to write this code, so I'd kind of do that, scroll up and down a couple of times, grab the code, kind of, you know, munge it up a bit, copy and paste, copy and paste, um, and you come up with this. I tried it just before, and actually the UI automation started writing a script like, you know, bring this cell, call this, make it visible, <laughs> and then, you know, and then make this cell visible, and I didn't really want to have it that hard, hard coded to the cell names or the, you know, the um, accessibility labels. So um, here's my special code, I'll put that up somewhere for you to grab later. So what I want to do is actually come back to here. This is our little example and we've purposefully gone in and actually as I said we've got corner radiuses on the, um, on the image view, we've got a drop shadow, uh, we've got a colour uh, with pattern image on the background of the cell uh, which might be very subtle, you might not be able to pick it up in the, on the screen there. Um, typically designers will want to put gradients or some paper texture or something like that. Um, and uh, we've also, down, down here, we've got some, you know, do some CPU intensive things. So I think there's some basic date calculations and some other stuff that takes a little bit of time. It's trying to simulate actually doing something uh, meaningful when those cells come on the screen. Um, underneath that, we've got some performance enhancements. So we've got things like, if you want to drop shadow, um, use a shadow path to make that more effective and faster. And again, we'll talk about all these things in more depth, maybe in a follow-up talk and we'll look at the actual um, differences that they'll make to your running application. Um, other things like applying background colors to labels, um, so UI label uh, typically has a clear background. Um, uh, this will make it opaque and give it a background color. I th oh, actually, no, they're not clear by default, are they? They're, 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 they're solid color, yeah. So basically what we're doing is we're taking off that, um, that um, uh, semi-opaque sort of background. Um, and I'll talk about the last one in a second. So, what I want to do now is start profiling, Oops, and that's what happens when you try and profile the simulator. Now with any luck, right, so my little script there, it starts up and it basically waits for 10 seconds and you typically want to wait a little while before you start doing stuff because normally the app will take a little while to hook up to instruments and um, it might do some setup stuff, so just let it settle down for a bit, scroll down a few times and then start scrolling up and down, so all it does is a couple up and down scrolls, but you want to get it down sort of in the middle of your um, content a little bit, maybe let it warm up the caches a little bit, um, or not the caches if you don't have any. Um, and then it starts going up and down, and you can kind of see what it's doing there in instruments uh, with the time profile and core animation um, frames per second. So that's just going to do its thing. And I think it's stopped. So there you go. So that's our first 
data point. Now if I go back to Xcode and we turn off all those really crappy things and we make the um, you know the background of the labels um, opaque and we run that again give it a little while I was thinking about putting a, another video on the side here while this was running just so you could watch something like some cats you know or something So you can see already that the frames per second is generally higher on, on this run, and also that the CPU is a lot lower. The, the scrolls don't necessarily line up identically with each run. Sometimes things take a little bit longer to start up. Um, sometimes maybe the scrolling actually finishes a bit quicker. I'm not sure. Maybe <laughs> that's why it's a little bit further ahead than the other one. But um, in any case, it does give you a very consistent way of comparing two different runs. Much better than if you were just sitting there going, you know, like this, trying to do it the same every time. So, has anybody here um, actually used in instruments to profile scrolling? Scrolling, yep. So a lot of you have, yeah. Does everybody know how to set up these templates? So once, okay, let's let's go from the start. Okay, here's another neat trick. In your schemes for your your build. You click on the profile um, uh, option here, and you can basically the, the default is ask on launch. So when you run the profile, it's going to say what what instruments do you want to use, and so you've got to choose it every time. It's a real pain in the ass. What you can do is set up these pre-configured um, sets of instruments, which I've done here, and I'll do it again um, here. So we're saying basically now we're back to square one. Um, we'll run instruments again. It's going to ask me, you know, which instruments do I want to run. Um, we'll grab the time profiler for starters, and we'll just stop that one. We'll a open up the library. We'll add the core animation instrument, and we will. Oops. We'll add the UI automator instrument as well. We won't put the CPU one on there for now. Now in um, the UI automation one we can add a script and I will grab my awesome code which I'll share with you later. Paste that in there. Uh, I think that's good to go. It's always hard to know whether you've saved it or anything. Yeah. So then we can should be able to run that. Now that should be running that script. And the secret to this is sometimes the automator um, thing might be like showing you this, which is like the log of all the automation steps that it's doing. Um, and so the script is actually in this drop down there, not the most obvious thing to find. So this just logs out what it's doing. <coughs> I'm just going to stop that. You'll notice that the graph here for the core animation instrument is showing sort of. Um, filled in sort of line graphs. Um, I tend to like the, um, the block graph a bit better. So then what you can do is save as template. Save it as my template there. Now you gotta quit, you gotta quit instruments. Uh, don't save that. Now the trick is when I go back here and I go edit scheme and I go to profile cocoa heads, you know, ask how much. Oh, it's not there, <laughs> right? So that's typical. Uh, yeah, okay. So you got to restart Xcode before that template will come up. Edit schemes. Profile. Ah, there it is. Right. So it's as simple as that, and and that saves you heaps of time if you're always putting your instruments together. Um, particularly for these kind of things where you've got a couple of different instruments that you always want to have when you're testing this kind of stuff. 
um, just makes your life a hell of a lot easier. The other thing I wanted to point out um, was that this little um, thing here that tells us how many frames per second, it'd be really nice to know actually what the average frames per second for the run was, but it won't tell you that. Um, it'll tell you the, the current you know, average frames per second there, but you can't even like copy and paste these values here and put them in a spreadsheet. So, um, yes, uh, Xcode tools team, get on that. Um, anyway, so that's pretty much it for my tips and tricks about measuring scroll performance. Hopefully you'll find that useful. And I'll quickly go back to my presentation. So <clears throat> obviously you really want to test on multiple devices. So don't test on your iPhone 5. It'll be awesome. And then somebody will say, the tester will say, oh, it's shit on the iPhone 4. And you're like, oh, damn. And then you'll spend three days trying to get it working nice again. So some devices are CPU constrained, and this is all relative, right? So, you know, devices in five years' time will say the iPhone 5 is CPU constrained. Um, but the 3GS is, is, by today's standard, quite constrained. Um, some devices are GPU constrained because, for example, the iPhone 4 uh, was pushing four times the number of pixels than the iPhone 3GS, but the, um, the, the GPU wasn't, um, you know, made a four times faster. Um, and some devices are GPU and CPU constrained and also have memory, um, uh, less memory as well. So the fourth gen iPod Touch is a really good one. That's what I was testing on there. So it's got less memory. Uh, the CPU is kind of you know, average and the GPU is um, probably as constrained as the iPhone 4. So what you want to do is choose a minimum hardware spec to optimize for based on your user base. So if you're... Yeah, and I know clients will always say this, it needs to be on every iOS version and every device that was ever made. But they've got to be pragmatic about it and you've got to look at your numbers. So if you've got Flurry or other analytics in your application, look at the numbers and, um, and they might tell you things like this. This is for one of our clients, um, that iPhone 4 is 20%, anything less is, um, or 3G, uh, or 3GS or 3, um, is 2%. Um, 4S and 5 is 78%. So Basically, we consider iPhone 4 now to be our low-end device that we'll actually optimise the scrolling performance for. And also remember, don't prematurely optimise. Um, just quickly, going back to the code, um, if you remember uh, here, I will quickly show this. Bear with me, go to the simulator. So we're back to square one again. Our blended layers. Um, simulator, there he is. Okay, so if we go here, debug, blended layers. You know, the, um, the photo is kind of looking like it's blending a whole lot. And then we go, okay, well, let's, um, oops, let's turn off the shadow. And let's turn off the corner radius because we you know, convinced our designer that round corners aren't in anymore. <laughs> I think that's why Windows Mobile 8 doesn't have any round corners. It's all just square. Um, no, no drop shadow? Yeah. Of course it's going to be fast. <laughs> um, uh, I'll take that one out as well and, um, and we'll do that. Um, <laughs> Let's go. Um, so we've got nothing on here. Is that going to <laughs> draw anything? Um, okay. So we'll try that. Okay, but uh, the images here are still red, right? So I said to, I said to Sam, oh, man, you know, can we get those not to be blended? And Sam said, yeah, I think I can. So we went off for a couple of hours, and he wrote some code to actually draw the draw the, um, the images instead of using uh, UI image views. So they're using the draw, the core graphics calls. Now core graphics uses the CPU to do the drawing. Uh, so this is awesome, right? Cool, look at this. You know, we've got all green, this is unreal. But you try it on the device and the scrolling is actually worse because the CPU is doing the drawing, particularly on the iPod, the iPod Touch. And so we went back and we took that out 
and the, the, the scrolling is buttery smooth. So don't just look at the color blended layers thing and go, oh my god, I've got some red on my, my thing. Uh, I've got to do everything in draw rect um, or use core graphics because it doesn't necessarily mean they're going to get better scroll performance. There you go. That's a real live tip. <laughs> so don't prematurely optimize, which is what I was doing by asking Sam to, you know, kind of make this thing better even though we didn't know it wasn't actually going to help. And each app is different, right? So when people tell you, oh, do everything in draw rect, it's like, well, that might be fine for their application because they might just be doing sort of read-only content, right? So it might just be static content. It might not be changing. There might not be a little timer on each cell changing all the time. Uh, they might not have controls on their cells. Um, they might not care about cell selection states. So if you start doing everything in draw rect, you've then got to sort of re-implement what table view does with its smarts about doing the selected uh, image for the cells. It will typically go through like labels and turn their background to be um, transparent so you can see the, the gradient behind them. If you do it all in draw rect, you're going to lose all that stuff. So then you've got to draw the background yourself when you select it. So each app is different. Don't just take people's um, you know, shouts and warnings on Twitter and blog posts about this is the one true way to get smooth scrolling because it's not always the case. And as the devices get better in terms of the number of CPUs and GPUs, um, what you read on Stack Overflow today, which was written three years ago, might not be, actually be true anymore. So part two of this presentation, which I need to get stuck into pretty soon, obviously, if we're going to do it next month, we'll look at actually the, the optimizations and their effect. And here's a little bit of homework for you, um, some dub dub videos. Uh, again, I'll make the presentation available um, so you can watch all these before the next presentation. <laughs> all the, uh, yes. Um, references, I, I did a whole lot of Googling. There's a whole lot of great stuff out there, and it's not just about iOS drawing. It, it is also about you know, the difference between um, what gets done on the GPU and on the CPU also applies to um, Mac OS X as well. So I think um, uh, there's some great blog posts on, on you know, uh, what are the GPUs good for, how, you know, what should you utilize them for, um, and when is it good to use the CPU. Um, I think Matt Gallagher actually did a post on that a little while ago. Um, there was also a good post from, from Nathan um, uh, about you know, iOS versus Android. Um, sort of rendering, and you know, I don't know where anybody who's used a, an older Android device, probably three months old, um, <laughs> the, the scrolling is shit, or it has been shit for ages, um, and he kind of goes through and actually explains, you know, kind of why that's the case, and it's not necessarily because they don't have hardware acceleration, it's probably more because of the way they actually um, do a lot more redrawing than you possibly need to. Um, yeah, and just you know, get back to basics. Read the Apple documentation on on you know your uh, core graphics and all that kind of stuff. Um, and there's a really good post from Twitter and some other people about just general things you can watch out for. So we'll go through some more of those maybe in the next presentation. One tool I just wanted to point out is is Image Optim, which um, will take your images, crunch them down a bit, and make them faster to load. And we've noticed some definite improvements by using that. I'm Sean Woodhouse. I didn't even explain that at the start. I run a company called Itty Bitty Apps. Um, we do client consulting on site and we do product development in house. Um, thanks for watching. Any questions? Yes? I'll go to clap. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to clap. <laughs> Any questions? Not from Chris. <laughs> <laughs> yes? So why was it blending the, the UI image view? Uh, we think that the, the actual image had um, an opacity layer, so it's a PNG with transparency. That'll do it. Anyone else? Yeah? Can the same common sense be applied to um, drawing outside of the table view? Outside of the table view. As in just in the UI oh, view. absolutely, and that, I guess that's what I kind of meant by as the, the talk really was meant to be about smooth scrolling in table views, but it really um, uh, applies to anything that you do uh, on on you know in terms of drawing and understanding how the drawing pipeline works will help you make decisions about um, the best approach to take for a particular situation, maybe even on a particular device. That's it, cool. We're going to the next one. Better, thanks.